In this video, we're going to focus on how to actually calculate slope. And slope is, is usually represented by the variable m. And to calculate it, we just compare two points on a line. So let's say this is our blue line right here. Our goal is to find the slope of it. How do we do that? Well, pick any two points on that line, compare their heights, and compare their horizontal distance. That's called the rise and the run. And we'll come back to this right here, but I just want to give a little picture, right? We have this line with these two points, and we can calculate the slope if, if we know those two points. But the idea is, um, here in this applet, this is math, open reference. Uh, we're going to come back to it because you can really play with this to see how these heights, the rise, and the, this is called the rise and the run, how that affects our slope. But that's the basic idea. Pick two points on a line compare their heights, compare their horizontal distance, and that tells you m, the slope. Here the slope is 5, and we'll talk about why. So let me just pull up this other window. So a was 25, that was our first point. 20 and 5. And b is equal to, let me just pull this down here, 25, 30. Okay, so b is equal to 25, 30. Okay, so now m is our slope. And slope is always, we say, it's equal to the rise over the run. All that means is we're comparing the height versus the horizontal distance. Or another way of saying this, rise can be thought of as delta y, and run can be thought of as delta x. All that means is the difference between the y values, delta, the difference between the two y values in our coordinates, or the heights, and delta x, the difference between the horizontal positions, or the x values. Now to set this up, we take one of the y values in one of the points, let's say this one right here, and subtract the other y value from it to compare the heights, right? And then we put that over the uh, one x value minus the other, 25 minus 20. And that's our slope, right? 30 minus 5 is 25, right? 25 minus 20 is 5. 25 divided by 5 is 5. So our slope here is 5, and we'll, we'll look back at the other picture in a moment to see what that means. But I just want to point out that we could have reversed the order here. Instead of doing 30 minus 5, we could have started with this point, 5, and subtracted 30 from it, right? And then here we could have done 20 minus 25. Because then what would we get? We would get 5 minus 30, well that's negative 25, and okay, negative 25 over what? Well, 20 minus 25 is negative 5. And this is actually still equal to, to 5, right? Because negative 25 divided by 5 is positive 5. So the point is you can start at A or B, right? But, but be consistent. If I start at A and make 5 my first Y value, right, that I'm subtracting, I have to do the same with my X. I have to make that X the first value, right? And then I have to subtract the, the B Y value here from the A Y value and subtract the B X value right, from the b, the ax value. I don't want to mix that up. So, you know, delta y, again, what this really means is take one of the y coordinates, say y2 or whatever, and subtract y1 from it. That's delta y. And then delta x is x2 minus x1. Just different ways of saying the same thing. You might, you might like, thinking about it this way, right, just subtract the y values and x values. Or think about a delta x, delta y, or delta y or delta x. Or think about it as rise over run. Either way, that's the slope, and that's how we calculate it. But what does it all really mean? Well, here, you know, if the slope is 5, this means that if we start at this point, I, I can go over 5, then I have to go up 25 to get to this point right here. In other words, if I start at any point, I can go up 5 and over 1 to get to an, another point. Or the same ratio, 5 to 25. Because 5, right, up, to, up 25 and over 5 is the same as up 5 and over 1. They're equivalent fractions. So the slope is just telling us, okay, if you want to 
follow along this line, use the slope. I could start here and go up 5 over 1 and land here. Go up 5 over 1 and land here. Up 5 over 1, up 5 over 1, up 5 over 1, right? This process over and over again. The delta y, the difference in y, and difference in x. And that's what slope is, just talking about that rate of change. So here, you know, the slope is just going up 5 and over 1. We could say it's going up 25 and over 5. That's not incorrect. But we simplify it. We don't leave it as 25 over 5. We try to find the smallest whole ratio, right? So 5 to 1 if possible. But we can play around with the slope if I bring down the rise. Right? You can look at what's happening here. So I bring down the rise, the line becomes less steep, and the slope also becomes less steep. Right? And the slope goes down. So now my slope is 2. What does that mean? Well, if I go up 2 and over 1, right, that's my slope. I can start at any point on the line. In this case, A is 25. I go up 2 over 1, and that brings me to the next point. I can keep following that up 2 and over 1, up 2 and over 1. And that's how my slope tells me how the line is actually increasing or decreasing. You know, you can bring this down. Eventually, with the rise, will become zero. And when that happens, right, as soon as the rise is zero, that means our delta y, our difference in y, well, there's no difference in y. All the points on this line have the same height. So that means the height difference is going to be zero. There's no difference. So zero divided by anything is zero. So this slope is zero. And then here, right, now we get a negative slope because now we're going down and over right down and over and that helps us understand what's happening here let's see if we can get a vertical slope that's really fun too here if I right because the slope is steeper and steeper eventually I reach an undefined point and let's think about what that why that is why would this be undefined well let's look at these points 25 and 20 26 so let's let's clear this off we have a still equals 25 but now B is right above it. So B is 20, right? 26, I think that was. Yep, 20, 26. And the X values are the same. So why is this a problem with slope? Well, slope is just, again, rise over run or delta Y over delta X. Or you can think of that as Y2 minus Y1 over x2 minus x1 and here let's let's pick an x1 and a, and a y1 I'm going to use let's say these points right here y1 x1 and this will be y2 and then x2 so we want to find delta y right so that's y2 minus y1 so 5 minus 26 over, well, x2 minus x1 is 20 minus 20. Now, before we even solve 5 minus 26, let's really focus in on this right here. What's 20 minus 20? Well, that's just going to be 0. So now we have some number over 0. And I'm not going to talk about it too much here, but you can't divide by 0, right? You can't just take something and divide it into 0 groups. Where did everything go, right? We start with something. So this is actually undefined. So the slope becomes undefined whenever the x values are equivalent because in the denominator you'll get a zero. And that means you're taking some number up here and this line, of course, this fraction means division, and so you're dividing it by zero, and that's undefined. So in a sense, it's the opposite of the, the, the zero slope. The zero slope, right, in a zero slope, our y values are equivalent. So the numerator will end up being 0, and the denominator will end up being some number. And we can do that, right? 0 divided any number of ways is still 0. So if the y values are equal, then our slope is 0. But if the x values are equal, like this one right here, and as you can see in this picture, we have something that's undefined, right? Because we're trying to divide by 0. So anyway, I just want to give you a sense of maybe how to try and calculate slope. And again, this is math open reference. Play with this to see you know how slope moves and how the rise and the run really look on any line that you're given. And you can you know move the points closer together, further apart. It will really give you some great insight.